Welcome back everyone, Jake here. Currently, we're on day 64 of Russia's disastrous invasion of Ukraine, and it's estimated that Russia has had over 22,000 soldiers killed. This doesn't count missing in action, wounded in action, or POWs. And Russia keeps losing generals. The Ukrainians keep blowing up Russian command posts and killing their generals. I think the number of Russian generals killed so far is over 10. I'm sure Western intelligence is using satellites to feed information, and then the Ukrainians basically send out these decapitation squads to take out these command posts. The latest strike could be the most dramatic. This was last Friday. Ukrainian forces on Friday reportedly destroyed the command post of the Russian 49th Combined Arms Army near Russian-occupied Kurzon in the south of Ukraine. According to the Ukrainian intelligence service, the attack killed two Russian generals and wounded a third. So what are the range of these new howitzers that were just sent to Ukraine? It's about 18 kilometers or 11 miles. Hopefully these can be put to good use uh, with their 150, 55 millimeter rounds. Here is a, an updated war map put out by the BBC as of April 27th with the territory currently occupied by Russia. And I took this screenshot of the map from March 29th just to see what their progress was like. This was right before Russia basically gave up on the idea of taking the entire country, capturing the capital city of Kyiv. They've since uh, a month ago pulled all of their forces out of the north to swing them around to focus on this southern part, to focus on taking all of the Donbass region, Mariupol, and the land bridge to Crimea. And I've got to be honest, uh, in the last month with the full force of uh, Russia's navy, air force, and an army, they still have not gotten control of the Donbass region. Right now, it feels like Russia is just trying to reform their battalions, and all the two sides are doing are just uh, lobbing artillery at each other. They're not really trying to make too much progress on the ground, one direction or another. Let's now talk about the state of Vladimir Putin's health, and check out this article title, Trembling Tyrant, Bloated Putin Seeing Gripping Table, Slouching, and Constantly Tapping Foot, Fueling Parkinson's Rumors. Vladimir Putin is getting up there in age. He's currently 69, and the average life expectancy of a Russian male is only 73. The video in question put out by the Kremlin, this was a little over a week ago, and Vladimir Putin wanted to put this out in order to look magnanimous, that he was telling the Russian ground forces not to storm the catacombs of the Mariupol steel factory. So for whatever reason, they wanted to film this video. Unfortunately, the subtitles are covering up Vladimir Putin's tapping foots. Let's just watch the first couple seconds and then we'll talk about it. So in the video, he's saying it would be wrong to lose many Russian forces to go into the catacombs of the steel factory. However, they're still trying to kill all those civilians and marines underground. They're still bombing and lobbing artillery at the factory. And with this video, you'll notice the cameraman pretty quickly uh, zoomed in to a body shot for Putin, cropping out his foot. But this video does not make Putin look very good. I, I don't speak Russian, but they're saying that he's slurring his words a little bit. He's got a bloated face and neck, poor posture, sitting in the chair, tapping his foot, and gripping the table. And this is something you might do if your hands uncontrollably shake. You would want to hold on to something to prevent that from happening. Additionally, there's another video that has surfaced that came out of the Kremlin of Vladimir Putin meeting with the dictator of Belarus. This is Lushenko. And his hands uncontrollably shake at one point. Additionally, his footing and his steps aren't very smooth either. 
So let's just watch this closely. And that is Lukashenko shaking his hands. So you can see, if we can uh, get rid of this view reply, so you can see, shake, 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 and even his footing, uh, trying to walk around, isn't that great either. So Putin has not been making very many public appearances since the war started two months ago. He did, however, uh, recently meet with Russian Olympians to do an awards ceremony for their Olympic performance. And at this ceremony, he's just not looking very good. What, fla unflattering photos can occur for anyone at certain angles, but his hands definitely look kind of puffy. His face and neck also looks pretty puffy. This uh, video is pretty crazy, but uh, Putin Easter Church Service videos prompts uh, speculation that the TV footage was staged. There's lots of evidence of past events where Putin supposedly was appearing live, where the clocks on the wall didn't match the time of when he was actually supposed to be live at an event. And this is from the Easter Service Sunday. So this is the Patriarch of Moscow, Kirill, and Putin is supposed to be standing off to the side live during the, the Easter uh, Sunday service. So watch the first couple seconds and see if you can spot the inconsistency. So the man to Putin's left is the mayor of Moscow. So there are two individuals in, in suits standing off to the side. But you'll notice this mural on the wall. It's the right foot with this green robe and then this crown at the foot of this mural. Putin is supposed to be standing to the, uh, the left of the crown holding a candle. However, there was a cutaway shot of the live service and uh, this gentleman right here is the mayor of Moscow. Putin is supposed to be standing right here. So you'll notice, uh, once again, this shot, the green robe of the foot of this figure in the mural, then the crown at, at their foot. Here's the cutaway shot of the live event. And there's the green robe. There's the crown. Putin is not standing there during the live event. So what had to have happened was, is they filmed him standing there, pre-recorded, and then spliced in those cutaway shots to the actual live Easter uh, Sunday events. How did they do this? Uh, it's not very hard. Apparently, somebody working at the Kremlin leaked this video of Putin being there ahead of time, uh, filming his standing uh, cutaway shots. So there is the mayor of Moscow with a candle lit. Uh, obviously, they could be rehearsing it. It's not unusual for presidents to rehearse. But more than likely, all the parts that he was supposed to be in, they filmed it ahead of time. And then at the live events, he wasn't there because they don't feel comfortable having Putin at uh, live events. Additionally, even the cutaway shots that they did film for him, you can see he's kind of smacking his lips and not still not looking that great. If Putin actually does have some kind of chronic disease or specifically Parkinson's, this would be ironic historically given that uh, it's widely considered or reported that Hitler also suffered from Parkinson's and it was covered up in propaganda footage. So the, tell, the telltale tremor of a doomed tyrant, how Putin's uncontrollable shaking hand bears the hallmark of Hitler's Parkinson's disease as Allied forces closed in on Berlin in 1945. So there actually is a clip uh, that was found in East Germany years after the war ended showing very clearly uh, Hitler's uh, handshakes. So this video is one of the last videos of uh, Hitler alive. He's meeting with basically teenagers that are being conscripted to uh, fight to defend Berlin to the last soldier. 
and uh, his left hand is behind his back. Let's watch the clip together. But a critical part of the footage was deemed unfit for viewing, cut, and presumably supposed to be destroyed. But this footage survived. It was found in an East German film laboratory in the 1970s. The clip clearly shows the shaking Hitler could no longer control. Hitler began to show symptoms of Parkinson's disease during the war. He had a shake in his left hand and for time. So that's the shake of Hitler on camera. Let's now juxtaposition this with the uh, shaking of Vladimir Putin's hand. It, it's, it's up to you what conclusions you want to draw. But in general, Putin is, like a lot of uh, famous historical autocrats, a germaphobe. He's very uh, conscious and, and, and uh, paranoid about getting sick. This is how he chose to interact with people basically during the COVID lockdown. And he's still doing it, even though, you know, COVID is, is dying down. Hopefully the vaccine given to the general Russian population is effective. But the head of the UN just visited Putin a couple days ago, and Putin is still insisting on meeting with people, you know, across this ridiculously long table. So he's not letting anyone get close to him, one, for fear of assassinations, but two, he's just uh, isolated, paranoid, probably in poor health, and very uh, paranoid about getting sick. So, I don't know. Potentially, this could bring a swift conclusion to the war if, over the next couple weeks, next couple months, Vladimir Putin's health deteriorates to the point where he can no longer effectively govern the country. Okay, everyone, that's all for this update video. If you found it informative, consider giving this video a thumbs up. It really helps out with the algorithm. If you have any comments or questions, let me know down below. I love hearing from you guys. Till the next video, take care, be safe.